so i hope my slides are visible now yes okay uh, so my talk uh, today is to talk about uh, de novo hospitalized patients with uh, heart failure and i'm going to restrict my talk to heart failure with reduced ejection fraction uh, so after that wonderful talk by dr jyotim i and a quite a complex talk i would say uh, this is possibly a much simpler talk uh, which i think as cardiologists we like things to be more simple uh, so what i'm going to talk about is a new entity which is known as a de novo hospitalized patients and uh, we are going to restrict our talk as i said to heart failure with reduced ef i'm not going to be talking about patients with heart failure preserved ef which itself is another uh, sort of uh, entity and we need to spend another time there to discuss this entity um uh, just move my slides yeah so what we have to understand is that there are two entities that we know about one is acute decompensated heart failure and this is something that we are all aware of we talk about this entity of acute decompensated heart failure when we have a patient who already has an underlying congestive heart failure or a chronic cardiac dysfunction and when this patient presents into the hospital with the decompensated heart failure we call this entity as an acute decompensated heart failure so once there is a terminology of acute decompensated heart failure we are talking about an entity where the patient is known to have an underlying cardiac disease and there is some precipitant factor which has precipitated his heart failure but then there are other entities which is known as a de novo heart failure in which the patient is not diagnosed to have a heart failure or a heart disease earlier so this usually is the first presentation where the patient presents with heart failure or is also known as new onset cardiac dysfunction or the patient may have had pre existing cardiac disease which was not known to him or to the treating doctor and again there is a precipitant factor which has produced this disease now this has to be treated differently than an acute decompensated heart failure and we'll talk about this why uh, what is the differences in uh, presentation as well as in the treatment protocols uh, again as i said we could present with either a reduced ejection fraction or a preserved ejection fraction and my entities i mean we are going to concentrate only on the reduced ejection fraction and this could be the similar similar whether the patient presents with an acute decompensated heart failure or a de novo heart failure uh, so this is a growing challenge and this is a terminology that we are going to hear more and more in the future and it's there already in the guidelines a de novo heart failure basically says when there is a sudden increase in the intracardiac filling pressure and or myocardial dysfunction and again the precipitants are often the same as you have in acute decompensated heart failure it could be arrhythmias it could be anemia it could be an infection it could be ischemia and all of this presses the patient to come into heart failure and what does it do it produces pump failure so there is a forward failure as well as a back failure causing pulmonary edema as well as a right sided heart failure so the management is basically supportive either pharmacological or mechanical and you need to correct the underlying cause uh what is, my topic is going to be talking about what how exactly we treat these patients with de novo heart failure with reduced ef and as i said de novo basically means that it's a first presentation of a patient who does not know or it is not known to have a pre existing cardiac disease well uh, just for my uh, sort of uh, understanding if uh, all of you being uh, great clinicians and you probably see more patients than i do in my clinical practice in my hospital well if you have to look at your clinical experiences how many of such patients do you think would have a de novo heart failure and uh, well the global trends usually tell us that it's around 30% of patients who present to the hospital with heart failure with what we call as a de novo heart failure with reduced ef so i think the rough estimate is around 2 to 3 of patients out of 10 would be patients who are probably not diagnosed earlier the number would be more with with the physicians and and uh, people like you who have see the patients primarily rather than me in a tertiary referral hospital when i see patients only after they have been seen and diagnosed by you uh, and treated by you earlier uh, so despite uh, this uh, i'm seeing some lines coming on the screen i mean this is not mine okay so de novo heart failure we know that uh, these patients who present with de novo hospitalized heart failure are usually patients who are younger unlike patients with congestive heart failure with a pre existing heart disease where patients are usually at an older age these patients are much younger they often have fewer comorbidities and they often have less likely to have ischemia as as well as coronary revascularization in the past so these patients usually present earlier they are younger and often they have not been tried with more medicines the reason being they have been seen for the first time in the hospital and it, but mark you the difference between mortality is not different between the acute decompensated heart failure in a patient with a chronic heart disease or in a de novo heart failure where the 30 day mortality is almost similar so whether the patient is seen as a first time or the patient has been seen earlier and presents with recurrent acute decompensated heart failure 
there is absolutely no difference in the mortality. And the outcomes are no difference whether it's the in-hospital mortality or the six months or the uh, CCO mortality. So the mortality is almost the same when it comes to de novo vis a vis patients with acute decomposite heart failure in a patient with a pre existing heart disease. And the other thing is that the reason for hospitalization often extends. These patients may need to stay in the hospital for a longer period of time as compared to patients who already have a known pre existing heart disease because certain time is spent in investigations in diagnostic workup to identify why these patients have a heart disease. The readmission rates of patients with de novo heart failure is also high, as I said, because of the fact that despite medical management, we still have these patients coming back and the 30 day readmission rates. And this was a data from Taiwan uh, where uh, they saw that the readmission rates at 30 days were almost uh, 10% and at 66 months was almost 27%. That's a huge number of patients. That means one out of your four patients will be getting admitted every uh, six months. Uh, so that's a huge number of patients, especially after they've been on good medical management. So they've been with beta blockers, they are on ACE inhibitors, but they still keep coming back with heart failure. And therefore we needed to have a better therapy for patients of de novo heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And the earlier choices were these. So we used to either try these patients with an ACE and an ARB in addition to the fact that we were on beta blockers and uh, we were on the, the uh, potassium sparing uh, um, uh, you know, diuretics, or we also have this medicine, which is known as an ARNI, which we could have tried. And now we have data to suggest that uh, these medicines work better, uh, especially when started earlier. Now, when it comes to the standard medical therapy for, for acute decomposite heart failure, we know that these are the, thick, the three main groups. Uh, and we have two new mo mo molecules that we now know about. So the ACNV ARBs were, we have known that they are used in patients with reduced ejection fraction for a long period of time. But unfortunately, then we don't know how early to start these medicines. And uh, the benefit of starting them early is really not known. So there'll be no trial which has been done to see whether you start early or you start late, that is in hospital or out of hospital, whether there is a difference in the outcome benefit when you start an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. And these are the mineral corticoid receptor antagonists or the potassium sparing diuretics, as we said. Well, there's also limited data to suggest that starting in hospital is probably better as compared to starting late. So there is uh, in hospital initiation is much better as compared to late initiation. So if you initiate late, this is associated with increase in mortality. And beta blockers, of course, we know that sometimes we are not able to start beta blockers when the patient presents with a 2D compensant heart failure, but the intention should be to start beta blockers as early as possible, as early as the patient stabilizes. And often the intention should be to say, make sure that the patient goes home on a beta blocker once he's medically stable from his heart failure. So the army group or the sacubitral valsartan group, this has been having a major, uh, this is one of the drugs that has shown to have benefit and it's in the guidelines as the only therapy which has had evidence for in-hospital initiation as suggested by the latest heart failure guidelines. So we are talking about the 2019 guidelines uh, which talk about the ESC recommendations and this talk about initiation of the ARNI or the angiotensin receptor neptralizin inhibitors, that is the sacubitral valsartan rather than ACE inhibitor or ARB. So the initial thing was that we used to start with an ACE inhibitor or an ARB and then switch over to a sacubitral valsartan. But now the recommendations talk about not giving a trial of ACE inhibitor ARB, but starting with sacubitral valsartan as an initial treatment of choice uh, rather than the ACE inhibitor ARB, because we have enough data to say that as compared to uh, ACE inhibitor and the, the paradigm HF trial has shown us that the sacubitral valsartan as compared to another greater benefit uh, in terms of mortality prevention and rehospitalizations. So this is a drug that should be started early in the course of a disease and that is what the guide. And this is just as I said, there's no need to titrate an ACE inhibitor first and then switch to a sacubitral valsartan. We need to switch or a start with a sacubitral valsartan directly rather than trying an ACE inhibitor. Uh, and this is a trial uh, which has again uh, shown us to be beneficial in this subset of patients. So when you're talking about the de novo hospitalized heart failure reduced uh, ejection fraction, what data do we have? Well, this is a data again, which talks about the anti-proBNP level when you use uh, a patient with de novo heart failure or a prior heart failure reduced ejection fraction. Well, in de novo heart failure, as I said, these patients are usually less sick as compared to patients with an acute decomposite heart failure with, pre with the previous reduced ejection fraction. These patients are younger and often they, are, they have a better blood pressure they have renal function that is better preserved as compared to patients who have a prior ejection, reduced ejection fraction. And therefore the benefit is also much greater 
and there's a significant reduction in the anti proprietary concentrations when you start with this drug earlier in patients with de novo heart failure reduced ejection fraction. Again, it also helps them to eat them out of the hospital earlier. So when you look at randomization at almost 56 days, that's almost a two months period. We see that as compared to enolapril, patients who were on ARNI had a much lower incidence of composite endpoints of cardiovascular risk or of re-hospitalizations as compared to enolapril. And again, when you look at the recurrence of heart failure hospitalization, this is again the same thing that we talk about. Uh, so, so therefore, this is a subgroup analysis which was published in the European Heart Journal of, of Heart Failure, where they looked at the transition study. Now, the transition study was a subgroup, and a subgroup of this transition study was done. And the transition study was a trial which looked at initiation of the ARNI early in the course of disease, whether that is in hospital or a late initiation out of hospital. And a subgroup analysis was done to find out that with these patients with newly diagnosed, that is de novo heart failure, which would be better? Should we start with ARNI in the hospital or should we wait once the patient stabilizes and start with them after they have left the hospital? Well, this is the event rates that were seen. And once you started the patients in the hospital, in the transition trial, it was found that there was an 11% reduced incidence of heart failure of a re-hospitalization or a cardiovascular death when the patients were started with ARNI in hospital or in a de novo as compared to patients with a prior heart failure uh, reduced ejection fraction. And as I said, this also reduced the in-hospital rates of re-hospitalizations as compared to the patients who had a previous uh, reduced ejection fraction. Now, again, uh, when you look at this, uh, when starting cyclovitrol well started, well, is it something that is very revolutionary? Well, we have looked at this data again, and there have been patients who have looked at the initiation of sacubitrol valsartan in patients who are ACV ARB naive. So these patients have not been given an initial trial of ACV or an ARB, and they've been started on sacubitrol valsartan as the primary therapy uh, without the initial ACE inhibitor or the ARB initiation. And this is again another study uh, published in the JACC, and we had uh, Ambrosi and uh, Dr. Eugene Bronwald as uh, lead authors. And uh, this was again a recent article uh, published a few months back, which again looked at ACE inhibitor uh, use of RNA groups based on history of heart failure without the use of uh, renin, angiotensin, aldosterone, antagonists. But this was what was found. We had a patient who was an ACE inhibitor or an enolapril earlier. There was a significant reduction with the use of ACE inhibitor ARP. And this was what the paradigm trial has already shown us. But if the patient was not on an ACE inhibitor or an ARP, the benefit was much greater. So this is something that is dramatic. If the patient was an ACE inhibitor ARP, yes, we know that our needs work much better as compared 